welcome to another Banter Podcast Bits. Great to be sitting down with you. It's Winter a, edition, Lenny. It's been a while. It's been ages. It's weird, isn't it? It's exciting, though. Good to see you across from the mic once again. Well, it's nice to, yeah, nice to be opposite you, I guess, because we generally haven't been able to have a chat. You've been gallivanting around the world. How is the, Qant- like how is the Qantas Club these days? <laughs> I'm not a part of it, actually, unfortunately. should make the most of that, though, shouldn't I? I have been travelling again two and a half months away. Been, you must uh, have some cracking stories. I've got a few stories. We'll tell a few off air. But, um, oh, well, no, I've got I'm a few sure, on as well. I'm sure Banter Podcast listeners would want to know what you've been doing. And what, what are some of the observations you've seen when you've been on your travels? Okay, well, I was in Mexico for a month of it, and then the rest of the time about six weeks in the States, so pretty good fun. Um, Mexico, the first two weeks in some pretty crappy places, to be honest. <laughs> sort of, don't, don't rate Mexico? Well... A lot of people pump it up. A lot of people go for honeymoons and stuff there. Yeah, but they go to the beach and they go to amazing, unbelievable places like along the beach, which is just incredible. And there's about five of them, I think. Oh, and you've got like servants and just tipping them 100 pesos here and there. Yeah, which is nothing, which is like a dollar. Mm. It's not quite, it's it's, uh, a little bit more. But it's, uh, so I saw a lot of the real Mexico, which is pretty run down and everything. And, um, you know, some of the food's not great. And uh, any food poisoning? Experiences? Yeah, I mean every week. I was Are you sick every week? Just about. Yeah, I, I even had. Uh, you know what I find the problem when you're sick in a dodgy country? Yeah, is you know you've had the dodgy food. You're thinking, oh no, I'm crook, and you then you've got to when you're out because you generally you're you're, on, you're, tour, you're a tourist or you're away and you want to see the country. True. So you're finding yourself in some dodgy toilets, which yeah. is not helping the situation. Of course, because you've all. got a soldier on. All, so I know all you really want is your own bathroom where you can just sit on sit <laughs> <laughs> and you're it's in good comfort. Back you're in comfort from your bed to the bathroom. But Pu- public toilets are horrendous. I can't handle public toilets. Do they make sometimes. you pay in Mexico? No. So they haven't got onto that. You know that European thing where you go to some European countries and you want to go to a public toilet? Especially like train stations and that type of thing. Just yeah. like flick us a euro, flick us a euro. Yeah. Every single time. to go to the toilet. That's not not great. rip off. Yeah. They've cottoned onto that. I'm, I'm waiting for. Why don't people cotton onto that here? What, at, like, say, yeah. Flinders Street t- Station Yeah, or get someone to clean it, charge you 20 cents. Or do you have to pay it, Flinders Street? No, not that I know of. I don't know if there's anything like that in Australia, is there? It'll come, don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll get on to that. We're not far away. Another way to make money and police something. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we'll dig it our country. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what, but, so what were some of the better observations? Yeah, well, so, you know, Mexico, yeah, not a great country. The drivers, world. you would love the driving there. I would love They're what, what? nuts. It is, it is like a video game. It's like you're in a video game. There's no real lanes there's, uh, I mean, they're just, you know, weaving in and out. You're driving up the ass of another car. Um, I mean, there's no seatbelts. So you're rattling along. I mean, like we're in taxis. You don't know where. They don't speak English. You don't know if, you know, I don't speak Spanish. You don't know where you're really going. So you didn't pick up any Spanish while you were I mean, there? A little bit, you know, like, oh, yeah, hola. Un yeah. poquito? Yeah, what is that? <laughs> a little. Pardon or something? A little bit. A little? Yeah, actually, no, I didn't hear that. Yeah. I mean, I, it's gone out, you know, it's gone in my head and out it's my... No, I've forgotten it. Culturally yeah. refined. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not bad at picking up languages generally, but I just tanked a bit to be honest. <laughs> Couldn't be bothered. I was with a bunch of Australians, so that helped. But um, yeah, the driving. I actually, it's funny when I get in driving situations. I, I think of you for some reason because <laughs> I know probably because I'm a pretty good driver. Well, you love the challenge. That's why. I do like the challenge. Yeah, you and uh, another mate of ours, Honky. You, you're a bit similar. Banter like regular. That. Some, some. That's of that. right. The banter's own Tom Connell. Yeah, you guys uh, just like <laughs> like setting yourself a challenge and getting there as quick as possible. I, probably just to for the sidestep. My best achievement in <laughs> behind the car <laughs> in terms of challenges. Yeah, I reckon we were heading into Sydney with some mates uh, on the Sydney Harbour Bridge, coming from the north side into town. We we're going to go to a pub in there to go and watch the rugby during the World Cup in two thousand and three. I was driving, so I'd driven up to Sydney to hang out with some mates up there. And I think if you've been across the Sydney Harbour Bridge, I think it's about seven lanes. There's a lot of lanes. A lot of lanes yeah. across. We were in the far right lane, <laughs> and the traffic was just banked back. And we had about 200 metres to the exit, which is on the left. Yeah. And we just thought, we made the decision. I said, oh, we can get off here. And you then, were driving? I was driving. And they okay. were all gone, nah, there's no way you can get off. We're just going to have to suck it up and go, just suck up this traffic. I said, nah, right, we'll, we'll, we get, go. we'll get across. Yeah. Fit your tongue and just went for it. Just... Indicator on, lots of waving. Seven lanes pretty in 200 went, metres? Pretty much went sideways, seven lanes in 200 metres. <laughs> if there's anyone out there who can beat that, please uh, yeah. let us know. Yeah, that's, <laughs> loved that's, it. That's Absolutely not bad. It. And they've all just gone, can't believe you pulled that off. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's a driving challenge you love. I mean, but they're very skilled in Mexico, the drivers, the taxi drivers. I mean, you have to be. It's just oh, absolutely. weaving it's like, well, out. It's like a lot of those third world countries, and I say that nicely There's, about Mexico, it's yeah. the third world country. They, it is, yeah. 
they have ridiculous driving, and yeah, you've got to be a good driver to drive. And you don't see many accidents, though. That's the other thing, which I've, I find incredible. Well, I didn't see many accidents no. at all when I was there. Yeah, so. okay. yeah. Anyway, so what else what um, Mexico? Well, I mean, not so much. The food was great. Uh, I put on about three kilos. Uh, yeah, I've come back and lost it, which is a bit lucky. Have you, though? Well, you know, I've worked hard the last few weeks. Because uh, I went to the States afterwards, of course, which is... We might get on to you losing weight soon. I want to ask you a few questions. Okay. About yeah, That's fine. Yeah. Well, I went to the States afterwards, which was good fun as well. And that's another dangerous that's certainly, place to put on weight. Certainly not a place where you're taking, <laughs> putting it off, but is it? No, you're not taking... You're not losing some weight of the burgers in the States. In America, some of the food in America is delicious. It's it is immediate delicious. weight gain. And you get so much of it as well. It's hard yeah, not to... Servings, uh, yeah. hard, hard to resist. Exist. Uh, obviously, did a lot of traveling, flights, um, buses. The, the bus system in Mexico is incredible, which you wouldn't, wouldn't think. It's like Argentina. The bus system there is fantastic as yeah, well. It's amazing. It's you travel in luxury. Like Full-on coaches, yeah. yeah. It must be just a South American, like a, a Spanish, uh, South American, Central American thing. They love their buses. Well, I think the the one thing you're mostly concerned about is a drug cartel pulling you over, you know, halfway, you know, towards your destination. Did you actually think that that was a chance to happen? Oh, the people I'm with were thinking that, so I got in that, that frame of mind as well. So when we started to slow down, you know, we're in the middle of nowhere, we're in the, in the country in Mexico... Yeah, you get a bit toey. Hmm, I'm not sure. And I'd... you hear stories. You hear stories yeah. about it. Why Actually, when at? I went to Mexico a couple of years ago, it would have been about five years ago, we went across the border. It was around the time. We went from the Foster border from California uh, down into... Is Tijuana down there? Is yeah. That, yeah. So I've crossed into... So dangerous, it. Tijuana. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. And people have told us, oh, you shouldn't go across. And it was during a spring break period... No one had gone because there'd been all these murders in Mexico, and we just thought, no, nah, we've got to do it. We've got to go across to Mexico. So we went across, yeah. went down the resort towns. They were all they were so wrapped to see us. These two white guys, you know, these two gringos that have come across. Yeah, because they can take advantage they of think, they're gonna, no, they're <laughs> thinking they're gonna, We're going to spend all our cash there, but there was yeah. no atmosphere there, so we only decided to stay for a day. Yeah, because no, it was no one there because all the Americans had stopped going because of all the dangers. But what we did see, we were on a bus because we just caught like a public bus there to get down to the beach because we had, we weren't going to drive our car from America across the border because it was a bit too dangerous doing that so we'll just get public transport across yeah but we're in the bus on the way uh back to the border to go get our car and we see this full-on SWAT team storm on this place and raid a place and there's like trucks and police vans and, and like, we're watching it from the bus like two blocks away going this is incredible so i can certainly understand you yeah of course yeah. well i mean this thing happens though also we were at one of the tournaments we went uh when we played at there was a secluded area, like closed off, um, you know, it was like a housing estate area. And one of the ladies that was driving, she was joking how a couple of years ago they found seven heads in one of the, in one of the houses. She said, oh, it's so funny. Remember that time when we, there was like seven heads there? And it was during the tournament, and laughing. We're just all freaking out, you know, in the back, you know, the back <laughs> of the car. You know, is this, you know, is this actually going to happen? Anyway, very interesting stuff. And, um, yeah, I mean, traveling's always, always fun. There's always some good stories. More yeah. will come, I'm sure. Yeah, in time. So you were going to say something about flying, though. Well, fly. I just get over flying. I mean, one of the times I had this guy, massively obese guy, next to me. He falls asleep. He's snoring. Um, He's he's snoring. Basically, what what are you doing? doing, (sighs) Like this, and he's blowing. He's facing towards me, and he's blowing. Yeah, Yeah. he's blowing air like against my cheek. It was sick. So is is this what I did? What's the elbow rest situation? Well, that that's, that gets me as well on planes always. <laughs> no, but what was the situation in this? No, he's this hogging it, of course. He's hogging it. Yeah, so I'm like I'm squished in, shoulders in myself. Don't you just work a bit of a nudge? In? Well, what I did is I got my pillow and I just shoved it between us, my head and his. So he's blowing into the pillow, still sick. I was just I was repulsed. <laughs> so about after about half an hour, he reali- he woke up and he realised you know that he was obviously Don't... intruding on my yeah. privacy in my personal space, and he, he faced the other way to but, blow on the other guy. But don't you? Get- just Sydney. a little bit. I I you like the challenge, like with the elbow situation. Cause yeah, you, you would like. There's another challenge. You, you love these little challenges. Are you a forward elbow person or a backward elbow? Do you like being against the seat? Or no, I like go forward. I like going back. Yeah, you want to be back. Against I just the think seat. that you, you have to. I almost think they need to design something that halfway up or halfway through the armrest, you got to have like a almost like a barrier. So each person gets a bit of the armrest because it's always a tussle. Yeah, but yeah. what happens if you're sitting next to someone that you want to be sort of nudging in next to? Yeah, well, um, and there's a barrier there, but you still you still has your you still have your arm on the same armrest. So like. I've got to ask you, it's a lot of international flights you've had. Yep. yep. I mean, it's. I think most guys have this thought process <laughs> when they're standing in the queue, just wondering who they're going to sit next to. Maybe there's some girls out there that think the same thing. See my eye couple off, hoping that yep. you might get yep. slotted yep. next to them. You might spot someone in the queue on your flight, and you're thinking, 
hmm, wouldn't mind having more than just a hello to <laughs> her during the next 24 hours of my flight. Ticking that one off the list. That's a tough one to tick off, I I'm think. not sure I'm talking about ticking it off. I'm just, yeah, just chatting, you know, seeing, where, banter. seeing where it goes. Yeah, I, didn't, I it, haven't been it, that lucky. So you, you get to your seat and you're like, oh. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever had a? Have you ever had one? I never have. No, I've been uh, a row behind once when you've just slotted someone checking in. You've gone. I wouldn't mind sitting next to uh, that person. And yeah, no, it's never come about. You? Did you manage to chat to her at all? No. Uh, okay. No, I've had one uh, years ago when I first went to London. Yep. Uh, just on the solo flight over, sat next to. In fact, there was a girl who was in the row in front. I think it was and. Started chatting to her a bit. You're doing the lean around chat, eh? I just no, just when you're boarding, you know, when you're just okay. standing up, you just that initial chat for the first sort of ten minutes before you're told to sit down and find your seats and all that sort of thing. Yeah, big, big flight ahead, all that sort of jazz. And then she's moved down uh, to the back of the plane because there was some spare seats there. <laughs> you haven't followed her, have you? I haven't followed her. Got the invite. Why don't no. you come down? Really? Yeah, why don't you come on down? That's a bit exciting. It was a bit exciting. <laughs> was a second invite to the bathroom? Or? No, I didn't quite get that far. Anyway, it was one of those ones where, yeah, just nothing ever happened, of course, on the plane. But yeah. uh, That's kind of exciting. Got though. to London. There's a bit of, you know, nice, comfortable nestling in. But yeah. So that was about it, really. Got to London, got off the plane. It was sort of a case of... Yeah, because I didn't have an English number or anything like that. I hadn't taken Aussie phones. So I couldn't give any number before Facebook, back yeah. in the day before Facebook. So it wasn't as simple as that. True. It wasn't, wasn't going to write. So it just, it just fizzled just out? Just fizzled. That's, that's another thing that I find interesting about travelling is you meet someone, you might see, meet someone for that day or that night, and you say goodbye to them. It's like, okay, nice to meet you. Never see you again. I mean... <laughs> Like, it's, it's, it's or, you, you'll never see them again. Or, you'll never see that person again. Exactly. Um, you might have a great time with someone, and it's unlikely that you would ever see that person That's again. That's something that we've spoken about, you know. Some, yeah, you meet someone that might be your best friend, but you never yeah. know, or it might be the love of your life. Exactly. And, and you never get any, get any further. It's, it's, it, it's interesting to think about. I find it also interesting when you <laughs> actually meet those people, how long you can have a conversation that goes into pretty in depth details about your life. Yeah. And like an hour, two hours into the conversation, you, you might know go. The person. So what was your name? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We've been and chatting like for this, so- and then you know, blah blah, blah divorce, blah blah. Yeah, yeah. Then, you know. So, yeah. Well, you've been divorced, have you? No, mate. So that's just an example. Just threw that I in there, did you? That. Yeah, full of it. <laughs> uh, interesting travel banter, hey? Oh, uh, travel banter. Absolutely. There's plenty of it. Absolutely. Len, so it's been two and a half months. Have you missed me? Oh, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed the banter, I have to say. Oh, it's, always missing the banter. Yeah, it's, it's tough when we're not, so I'm, I'm not sure, bantering regularly. I'm sure there's been a, a few interesting things that have happened to you or, you know, a few stories that you've picked up along the way. Nothing outrageous. It's, yeah. I mean, a lot at the moment, obviously, playing for the wedding later in the year. Of course. Um, looking at uh, finding a band for the wedding. It's very okay. difficult to find a band really? without having seen a band. Yep. So, Do you go the band over a DJ? Well, yeah, I've always wanted a band over a DJ, I think, really? for the wedding. I think band gets, is more likely to get you up and about. I mean, DJ, you know you, the songs you're going to get. It's yeah. It's pretty sad. Of course, you're going to get the dancehall fillers. Most bands, you still have a DJ in between the That's band true. Line. You want a good band, though. You want a decent band. This is the problem, mm. though. We're trying to pick a band without seeing them. A bit pricey, too, I'd imagine. Yeah, but a DJ isn't cheap, either. Really? Yeah, yeah wedding DJ. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, so... If there's Alex, any bands the out there that yeah. want to get come in touch. and play at Lenny's wedding... Get in touch with the banter. Tweet us. Yeah, at, at the banter, at the underscore banter. It's the weird underscore banter. You've got to throw the underscore in. Yeah. If it's, you've uh, been disloyal to the banter, you've been on radio overseas? <laughs> no, I was, I was on uh, a Guy in the Girl show in LA, actually, which uh, features our very own US sports correspondent, our former US sports correspondent, Guy David. So we basically gave him his big start. Uh, we trained him up, and he's moved to LA, and he's on. He's got a radio show there. It was great fun. Yeah, well, that's good that you've uh, managed to go out on your own and <laughs> find your own way. No, it, was just and... a, it was a guest. It was a guest spot. So, uh, Lenny, there's plenty of room for you, mate. They're waiting for you over there. Yes. I'm yeah. Sure, just I'm sure, I'm take sure. Charlie and Shell over, and I'm sure they are. I'm and sure they get, are. On the, get on the if show. Actually, one thing I will mention: uh, you talk about planning for weddings and stuff like that. And now that. Uh, I don't know if your household, you don't have a household, so to speak. You're just an itinerant bit worker. Of gypsy. <laughs> bit of gypsy around the world. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but Shell and I, you know, I've got the iPhone where I've got my calendar in, and then I've got the iPad at home, which Shell uses a lot to be on the iPad. Very Apple oriented. No, it is an Apple oriented house. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And then you've, yeah. got, you've got the Mac laptop as well. Right? So everything's all in sync. And the thing, problem with that is you sync all your calendars up, so everything's in there. Okay. So. 
putting all that, you know, wedding stuff in there, you know, got to do this, got to do that. You put something in your calendar in your iPhone, it will sync to your iPad and your Mac. As soon as I walk in the house, okay. the Wi-Fi network it's synced. All so through. I could borrow your your computer at home and I'll know exactly what you're going to be up to in the next month. Correct. Yeah, yeah, exactly okay. right. And so, same for any of our devices at home. They're okay. all synced. A little bit dangerous. <coughs> Is a bit dangerous. <laughs> so much so that it has actually caught me out. Oh no! What's happened? So I thought about arranging a present for Shell's birthday, which is coming up pretty soon. Yes. And I've no, there's a specific time and a place where I had to. I was buying tickets for a concert, so I've had to go and you know, go and buy these tickets for the concert. Yeah. And I've uh, put it in the calendar in my mobile phone calendar to remind me 9 a.m. Monday. Log on to the you know because it's. Concert tickets, they sell out so fast. You've got, yeah. you got to lock it down pretty quickly. Must be a popular band or person, I imagine. Yeah, well. or just you know, expensive as yeah. well. So you've got to lock it in, get get it locked down. Shell really <laughs> wants to see this person. It's, it's expensive. So I thought, yeah, right, yeah, let's do it. This is going to be a great present. Uh, put it in the calendar. Bought the tickets. All good. Discuss- Perfect. Dis- Done. Dis- discussions come up uh, later in the week. And I've just uh, you know thrown thrown a casual discussion out there. Because uh, I've realised, and this is the bad bit. Yeah, go on. That uh, the day that the concert's on in Melbourne, I've got to be at a wedding. Oh no! Elsewhere, okay. I'm uh, best man in a mate's wedding. Oh so. no! Not good. Not good. So I sort of threw it out there to Shell. Oh, you know that concert that you wanted to go to. Uh, were you thinking of going to it? You know, I know you know how you really want to go and say it's Bon Jovi. You, really, you know how you really want to go and see Bon Jovi. So you're sussing out the situation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did. did did you think... Were you going to go buy tickets? Because she was going to go with her sister or something like that. Okay. Yep. And oh, no. Oh, so it's in the calendar. Have you put it in the oh, calendar? She, she said, oh, yeah, have you already bought tickets for that, have you? I said, <laughs> no, why do you think that? <laughs> I haven't switched on yet. Why? I'm thinking, how would she know that? You're squirming a little like <laughs> at this stage, I don't no, imagine. I'm thinking, well, I'm squirming anyway because I've bought the tickets for the same day as the wedding. Yes, yeah, massive clash. So I'm wondering what's, what we're going to do here. Anyway, so she sort of said, yeah, I already know that you, you've bought the tickets. Have you maybe bought the tickets and you've realised that we've got the wedding? And oh, I've no. gone, uh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I said, how do you know it? She goes, babe, you put something in your calendar, in your phone, it's going to come to my calendar that I see here on the iPad. Oh, wow. So I imagine this is a major issue for couples everywhere. So it's it's technology. Sy- technology, syncing calendars. Massive, yeah. massive, massive issue. So how, do you, how do you have surprises? So if you're planning a surprise for your partner or for someone in the family... See, I think I use, my calendar as a, I use my calendar as a massive note thing. Well, as this a reminder. is the thing. You're too organised. If this was me, I mean, I would have, you know, forgot about it last minute and probably just had to get them off eBay anyway and, and realised, you know, I wouldn't have bought the tickets. You know, you're a very organised man, you see. The pro- I don't remember things unless I put them in my calendar. Mm, okay. So, oh, my memory's shocking. So, if it's, you know, for important events and things like that. So you think I'm organised, but it's all reminders that are... Is that right? They're all helping me out. So does that mean that... Anything that you're doing, Shell can just go and check. She can really follow what you're, you know, what exactly you're up to. Right. Exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> so if I put in, get away this weekend. If I'm oh, putting in, on, uh, have on. an affair with mistress from <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that function I went to the other night. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, I'm done. So <laughs> can't put that sort of stuff in the calendar. No. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Now, bids on Facebook, I noticed while you're away, you threw a few photos out there. You know, of you playing tennis, I think it was, at Venice Beach, which is good yeah, to see. just living it up, playing a bit of paddle tennis. Which brought me to something which you often see on Facebook, and that's the the holiday snaps yep. between couples. Now, you were travelling by yourself, so to speak. You were travelling with people, but you were by yourself. You weren't in a relationship. So, yes. yeah. so it was easy for you to say... Hey, whoever you're with, take a photo of me here. That's that's okay. True. And a lot of your photos were action shots, so they're not you posing in front of something. You can tell, yeah. 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 I'm not a big fan of the just the, the just take a photo of me in front of the Eiffel Tower. You're not a big fan of it? No. So we, if we're travelling together If you and I are travelling together. Yeah. What, so I, I couldn't ask you to take the photo of me? I don't think so. You not you don't like it? I don't like it. Well, no, maybe maybe it's different because we're obviously not a couple, so <laughs> maybe some people might think otherwise and the latest band of videos. But yeah, check him out, uh, YouTube Banter PM. Yeah, maybe maybe it's a case of it's what? okay when you're single because you know they were two mates traveling. Because mostly when you publish an album on Facebook, you've got the tagging and all that sort of thing, so people know that it's just you two that were on the trip. But he's saying that if someone gets someone to take the photo for them or like a selfie in front of the Eiffel Tower, oh, for self- example. Selfies are another poor fucking Fel- Selfies. Can you believe selfies? But They're everywhere. No, right? if... Say Shell and I go away on holiday, 
I'll say, just stand over there, babe, and I'll take a photo of you in front of that. I just think that's pointless. Why, though? You want to catch someone else. Catch you get the both of you in the shot. Yeah. Okay. How hard is it to say to someone else, just take a photo of us two in front of this? So you're saying that couples that are travelling somewhere and, they're, and you're just taking single photos of, of, of one of the yeah. Person, people. Yeah. Okay. Well, you're on holiday together. You know, you want to be in the photos together. That's true. I guess. Because yeah. what happens, what often happens is, and this is why it's funny, say it's the Eiffel Tower, let's use that as an example, and say it's Shell and I. So what will happen is you'll see the photo of Shell in front of the Eiffel Tower, and then I don't get a photo in front of the Eiffel Tower because you think, oh, I've got one of you, why would we take So you don't even know that you were ever there. No, you've got to take one together. If exactly. You, if you're traveling a couple, you just got to Surely the point together. of the photo in front of the monument is to show that you were there at that monument. Together. Well, that you were there. Yeah, true. That's the point of it. So if you just take the photo of one half of the couple in front of the monument, <laughs> you never know that the other person was ever there. Have <laughs> oh, I Jesus thought about this Christ. too much? Yeah, you think about why too much. You think about it so much, it's confusing me, actually. But no, I, I kind of... I do get what you mean. But I guess you want to capture the moment. I do. No matter if you're by yourself or you're with a couple or, you know. Speaking of capturing the moment reality TV they capture every single moment they chop it is, and cut it and make any reality, it there's, there's reality shows going on in Australia at the moment. I haven't watched there's this TV here thousands. for three months pretty much all, that's all TV is. I don't really watch it either but I thought I'd ask you Bids um, and maybe we throw it out on the banter what reality TV sh- on, our, on our Twitter or Facebook account what reality TV show would you like to be in what I'd like to be and in. you'd mentioned you'd put on a bit of weight in America perhaps the biggest loser <laughs> is what you'd be interested in no I, I put on I have put on people, weight. I've people, lost people can't see off. people can't see you though so. no I'm in I'm in decent let me tell you now. guys he's, fine. he's huge he's <laughs> massive very big moment. jacket what are you talking about <laughs> no I'm, I'm in alright shape mate but um mate put on one or two uh that's it. I'm going to throw it over to you. I need a little, a little bit of time to think. Well, I'll just throw a few out there. So there's The Apprentice, where you're trying to work and be a businessman yeah. person. The Voice, obviously you've got a decent voice. Yeah, of you. course. Not really. Horrendous. Uh, the Biggest Fatty. Oh, sorry, The Biggest Loser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Big Brother, just cameras 24-7. Yeah. Uh, Survivor. A Survivor. Bit of island material, yeah. you know, what? battling it out, okay. starving. I mean, you're going to lose weight there. Yeah, not looking at lo- losing weight. Master Chef, well, would you, you mention that? I only say the losing weight because you you mentioned it at the top True, of the show. Another on one bit. where you might lose some weight is so you think you can dance. So Dancing show, dance. you're working Can't hard. Dance too embarrassing. No. Uh, what about X Factor? Again, different sort of singing yeah, shows. Needed talent. Same sort of mold. Yeah, don't have enough talents for that. Uh, what about <laughs> Australia's Got Talent? No. No, I can't do that. You wouldn't do it. Amazing Race. You know, traveling around the world. Okay. All right, so out of those, I think I would probably go for Amazing Race. But you don't speak Spanish, and you weren't really interested in that. (laughs) Yeah, you'd get by, though, wouldn't you? I don't know. You just kind of do get by. Out of those, I would pick that you would choose... You wouldn't pick Big Brother. You wouldn't pick, I mean, any of the singing ones, because you... Actually, no, you do back yourself. (laughs) You do do back yourself with a guitar and singing. You're a triple threat. I forgot that. Um, But I reckon you'd probably pick Survivor. Yeah, I reckon I'd probably go Amazing Race. First. Amazing Race, yeah, that'd be my number one. Yeah, we just love it. like little challenges like that, yeah. and getting somewhere quick. Actually, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's, that's my bread and butter. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> just that would you'd be you'd probably win Amazing Race if you went on it. They just they didn't pick me because of that. You actually had tried to go. I did, on try, it, did yeah, try to get on. Did a video. It's did not a bad. video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> they realised this guy will be too good. It'll be boring. He's going to ruin the show. He's going to win every competition. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, right. Every race we have. <laughs> yeah. True, fair that's, enough. That's what they responded with. They said, you're too good. So you'd go, yeah, and what would, be, what would be the least that you would, uh, out of those uh, bunch? I think probably, I think any of the shows where they're watching you constantly and then they cut their own opinion of you, like there's producers sitting there going, oh, we'll make this person look like that. Yep. Oh, like MasterChef, all the cooking ones, would you do any of the cooking ones? W- yeah, I'd think about that. I'd, I'd go close to like a Master Chef or something. Yeah, I've learned a bit about those shows, and I'm not uh, from behind the scenes. And I'm not too sure. Either. Really? Yeah. Not quite. Uh, they, they starve them and keep them away. Can they don't let them see their family or speak to the outside world? What do you world mean? Or, How could they starve them? Well, they just don't. Let, they don't give them food until. So that's why they get cranky. That's why they're cranky and they cry all the time on these shows. Really? Yeah. So, so emotional. They're emotional. Yeah. They're just drained. And what? What do you mean you can't see your family? Because well, this is well, part you're of you're, lo- well. you're in lockdown. Once you go on these shows, you're in lockdown. You don't see your family or speak to the outside world. Because also they pre-film like two months of it or something. Oh, it? So you can't tell anyone you're on it. Oh, exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. Oh, it's horrible. Reality TV sucks. I'm over it. 
Yeah, I know. Bids, we're getting close to the end. Have you got anything we, else to... Yeah, Lenny, to, how, I mean, just to, I came across a couple in the States, which um, it was we were housing. We stayed at housing. Sometimes when you play these tournaments, you're travelling, they give you housing. And uh, we stayed with this George Bush uh, lookalike, classic, actually. Very nice family and uh, very American. He had a bumper sticker on his car that said, Navy SEALs won... Bin Laden, none, zero. <laughs> Just, that kind of that sets, sets the tone, basically. But they're classic, you know. I was going, well, I'm not sure he's quite on zero, Bin Laden. But anyway, um, <laughs> be a few more than that. I'm not going to say too much. But anyway, um, and we met we met some of their friends, and uh, that was interesting. Just on that, <laughs> on oh, the yeah. scoreboard, there one nil. Yeah, the scoreboard, yeah. The US not massive soccer nation. You would have thought they'd be seven zero or uh, you know like trying to pump it up. Well, no, this is their scoring system. Like one zero, it's synonymous with like soccer. That's true. So <laughs> seven zero as in like NFL, or NFL football. like yeah, yeah, like a converted touchdown <laughs> or uh, touchdowns one maybe yeah. yeah something like that yeah something like that yeah, I don't know it, it's you, interesting you got, it's an interesting scoring system great but I stole one of the bumper stickers out of the garage because like, this is oh, this, oh, it's fair yeah. Yeah. Well, I put it on my car and now one sorry go on so I met this couple and they they were telling me about their their, their sons and um, that one of their sons' name was called Braun and. Basically, they waited over a year to name their child. Like the appliances? Braun? Or well, how, Braun, how do you spell it? Braun, B-R-A-U-N. Like the, like the appliances? Yeah, so Braun as in also Braun, like a oh, yeah. strong masculine, and he's a weedy kid as well. well. Isn't that uh, W-N? Yeah, yeah, it is actually. Yeah. yeah, but I don't know why. I mean, the American, they spell it how they want. You know, they yeah, don't sure. really think these, sure. these things through. Is that what they were thinking? That he's like brawn like a muscle? I think so. But they, they took a year to name... How, how, why would you actually wait a year to name your child? So what would you be calling the kid throughout that year? That's an interesting point. Baby, come here, number one, or number two, whatever, you know, number kid yeah, it was. That, that is interesting, actually. When you release the name Braun, Charlie... B-R-A-W-N. Thanks, B-R-A-W-N. To, thanks to our producers for handing that to us. Thank you. Uh, when you named Charlie, how long did it take to actually... Did you, you knew the name before it was going to come out? Knew, knew before it was going to come out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was, that's one of the hardest things. Like Once you know the name, people, before the baby's born, are sort of questioning you, oh, any hints on the name? It's tough to keep in. And Yeah, you know the, you know what the name is, and people are guessing, particularly family. Like Your family's guessing. Like you know, My sister and mum were like, what, what's the name? Have you, do you know the name? What's the did name? anyone guess the name? I uh, don't think anyone guessed the name. They guessed one of our possible names, but yeah. didn't guess the name. Does it put you off if someone goes, why don't you name it Charlie? And you're going to go, oh, it's not a bad name, maybe. I don't know. Well, we didn't have the name guessed, so I don't know. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but what <are> they? <laughs> hard, hard to really know. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I just thought it interesting. How would you wait a year to name your, you know, your, your kid's name? Oh, yeah, I, can't, I, can't imagine, I can't imagine that. How are you coping with winter, Len, just uh, before we uh, sign out? Yeah, well, so it's okay. It's cold. And it's okay. Chilly tonight. You Rainy. Going, you're going to back to a European summer soon? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Get out <laughs> of here. Disgusting. Yeah. Looking, looking very tan. Yeah. Thank you. Tan and uh, full of food. Very tan. <laughs> now, it's got a bit of an, uh, an ugly story to finish on. Yes. Go for it. Now, this is uh, something that we sort of discussed a couple of podcasts ago. I'm not sure if it was uh, the most recent one or not before, and we've. I'd, I feel bad bringing up toilet humour again and toilet <laughs> behaviour into the podcast. Yeah, I couldn't handle the last one. Yeah, we got a good response, mind you, from a lot of our listeners. We did. That was quite funny. It was. Now, I was chatting to a, a, new guy, a guy that went out with a group of mates the other day, and they had another guy there who I hadn't met before as part of the group. You know, going out for a few drinks, and he was talking about this girl that gave him a profiterole. Okay. And I'm the sort of... And the conversation's been going for about half an hour or so. And obviously everyone else there is aware of what a profiterole is. Yeah. And I'm not sure what a profiterole is. So I, you know, jump in and go, sorry, I'm going to have to stop you there. I need to know what a profiterole is. Okay. We're talking about the profiteroles, like the stuff you eat. Well, <laughs> that's, well this, is, this is what I'm wondering. But the, oh, jokes I'm have, lost the, the jokes have been flying about this profiterole. Okay. Turns out she's in the act of lovemaking, has uh, just lost control of her uh, her vows. Oh no! Oh no! Profiterole. Oh god! Have you heard of that expression no, before? I haven't heard of that one. That's unbelievable. It's incredible. That, uh, so so this uh, immediately, this has regenerated a whole new uh, series of questions because I'm just fascinated by this. Oh god! I just said, so what do you do? This is the first one because oh. it's mid 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 action. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you don't you don't continue. 
Well, they <laughs> you don't continue. No, but I said well, accident or on purpose because you know some people might get off yeah. on that sort of thing. And that's that's important as well. Oh yeah, real important. Uh, so <laughs> what do you do? I mean, I'm so it was an a- so answers to the questions. It was an accident. Yes, they stopped. Oh lord. So once they've stopped and she, you know, major embarrassment, she's really embarrassed, all that sort of thing. I hope there are a couple that have been together for a while and you can mm, kind of deal no, with it. No, not really. It's been just a newish thing about a month or two months in. <laughs> I think that's all over, isn't it? So this is the next question. Yeah. Where does it go from there? Yeah, well, I, I think you, you can't get any worse than that, can you? So it's only up from there. But you've seen, seen it all if you've seen that. Just Any, about. Anyway, <laughs> uh, he, he said, I said, yeah, he saw her twice more and that was it. But yeah. it, that, that it's, it's scarred him. Yeah, I think it would. I think it's, it's probably, it's scarred for at least a few months if, if that were to happen. Yeah, I can, I can imagine <laughs> that. Any, have you got any more to finish on, Vince? No, Len, we're good, I think. Uh, it's great to catch up. Always good to catch up. And any of those listeners out there, just tweet us at, at the underscore banter. Yeah, any suggestions for the podcast? We're happy to or chat. On Facebook. Yeah, Facebook page, the banter. Beautiful. It's been good chatting. Speak soon. See you soon.